Same portable generators. These, these things are 3K to about 8K, 10K in size. Um, you can go down to uh, Costco and there's always one on sale. Um, Home Depot has a lot of them. Uh, actually, they're mostly out of stock at the moment. People have been buying them like crazy. And nobody knows what they're doing. Well, the, they'll, they'll be returning them shortly. Well, uh, that, one of the things that happened that, that Home Depot is cracking down is people, before Storm would go buy a generator, if they didn't need it, they'd return it. You know? And now they're saying, mm -mm, no, no, we don't care, you bought it, it's yours. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing that people are not getting about generators, portable <coughs> generators, small emergency generators, you can't live like you normally do when you're not in an emergency. Uh, Frank Casella has the best story. A woman came into the shelter after the hollow or Kate called up uh, Red Cross. She wanted to be sheltered because her generator kept failing. And she was very upset. She had only done two loads of wash in the generator. <laughs> now, she, had a, she had a 5K generator. She had a 5K generator, and the dryer alone takes 5,400 watts, 5.4K. <laughs> And she was very upset. She has her priorities, right? Yes, right. <laughs> you know, you, you really have, unless you're going to go out and get one of these uh, Generac standby generators, the 15 kW generators that fed off natural gas, by the time you install it, you're talking a minimum of $5,000, maybe more. One of our neighbors got a 22,000 watt Kohler. There you go. Yeah, yeah. great. You know, uh, unless you're going to do neighbor. that, you have to yeah. prioritize. You have to <coughs> sit there and figure out what do you really I mean, need to, you know, to yeah. survive. You need your furnace, hot water would be nice, your refrigerator maybe, if you have a sump pump, if you've got a well, if you've got um, uh, some people who have um, septic tanks, there's a, what's something called a lift pump in there. Uh, those are the key things. You don't need your 50-inch uh, entertainment center. You Tell know, my wife you, that. Yeah, you don't need your dishwasher, you don't need your coffee maker, you don't need your, need your microwave on and on and on. You need the internet. If, yeah, if you have internet, be, yeah, if it's, working, if it's anyway, working, but internet doesn't take a lot of power. Okay. Yeah, but, so, but so you, the repeaters for the cable vision need power from the power right. line. I said, so if, if you if don't it's have there. power, you probably don't have But by the way, uh, seriously, FEMA recently put out something about emergency communication, about communications in a situation like that, and they said, you should have a regular copper landline phone, not a voice over IP phone. <coughs> Okay, because those That's stay in right. operation, yeah. except that they don't. Um, in any sort of major area like this, those phones are now fiber, and they need a repeater every couple of miles. Those big things that you see on the phone poles every couple of miles, they're, they're, yeah. they're about as big they're as these. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. The those they're are the repeaters, oh. okay? They have batteries that will last, depending on the usage, they'll last 8 to 12 hours. <laughs> At the end of the... I saw the evidence. Yeah. Because parked on Bridge Street was a freaking huge 8 kilowatt commercial generator chained to the yeah. telephone. Yeah. Yep. Right. Chained. So, so in this, in this area, and in fact, in most large metropolitan areas, it's all fiber, guys. The, the, the concept of the, you know, the, the twisted pair of copper that'll stay in operation no matter what, that's gone, but FEMA is telling everybody, oh, make sure you have a twisted pair of copper wire phone because uh, I still have geniuses. I, mean, I still, still have, everybody. Not I still us, have a giant twisted pair of copper. You may think so, but what's kind of... I see the guy from the phone company mm -hmm. playing with all those millions of wires. What's coming into the house is, is copper. No, but what goes the, to the box? I haven't changed my street. Oh, well, then you're lucky. Okay. Because yeah, well, around here, most of the there's an emergency communication Less than a mile center. from the, yeah. the Greenwich <laughs> Central Station. Is so, you know, most wired. places, most places, that, that just doesn't apply anymore. Greenwich has some of the ugliest telephone lines running up and down That's because everybody uses cell phones in Greenwich. They, I mean, they're they're like, all too rich for that. It's not twisted. It's Greenwich not, is not twisted copper. It's, it's twisted like, platinum. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gold-plated I mean, connectors. Gold-plated I mean, platinum, right. connector boxes that are like, you know, that right. big. You go up to North Street and to Connick Road, it's the ugliest intersection. Uh, these you things are still, still, these things are still pretty bad. Anyway, okay. Um,
So you got to figure out what you want. I'll, yeah, we'll we'll put the presentation on the website. I've got a chart of, you know, typical kinds of power consumption. As the chart says, check your stuff because what you have in your house may be different. For example, I used the figure of 100 watts for a laptop. Well, if you've got a really new, really super duper laptop, it may only be 50. And as a certain MIT engineer here will tell you, that 50 watt difference, that's going to be millions of dollars in cost differential between the generators. No, it's, you know. um, or, or I've got on there a figure for, I think it's 900 watts for a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. There are new, you know, the newest and latest and greatest and most energy efficient uh, 5,000 5, BTU air conditioner might be 500 watts. But, and we all know that everybody who runs out and always gets the newest, latest, greatest, most efficient air conditioner every year. So, yeah, they should, right. And you know what we figured out? If Fred had been in charge of designing the Titanic, it would have, it would have had even fewer lifeboats. Anyway. What if we voted? That's true, too, though. It would have been square, but it would have been. <laughs> Not as slow. Chris Munger, the mayor's special assistant um, for, for emergency planning, visited Fred at his at his workshop, and after he came back, he called me up and he said, is this guy for real square gears? Is he pulling my leg? I mean, what, what, what? <laughs> anyway, uh, so you've got to figure out what you need, because you've got to power the thing with either gasoline or propane. There are a few generators that all of these generators that will work off of um, natural, gas. Natural, natural gas, but not a lot. Okay. You take an 8,000 watt generator, and that generator is going to run nine two and a half gallon cans of gas a day. <laughs> Four and a half, five, five gallons. gallons. Yeah, well, whatever. The point is, you know, that's one day. Are you going to have that many cans of gas to begin with, and how are you going to refill it? Yeah, because but the thing is, you don't run 24 hours, you run 12, yeah. well, 10 let's, or 12. We'll, we'll go something like that. We'll, Maybe. It may be. Maybe. Even if you do ten, even if you run it half the time, you're still talking about five cans. If you go to a 12 kW generator, you're talking about 12 to 15 cans of gas a day. You need a hose to the uh, <laughs> yeah, gas station. to the gas station. <laughs> yeah, but and the remember, thing is, a lot of the gas stations won't be able to pump right. gas either because there's no air problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's just going to run a hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Believe it or not, most of the gas stations don't have generators to pump, to be able to run, pump their gas. Um, in in uh, in uh, Florida, every all gas stations are required to have solar and also standby generators to pump gas. But uh, for example, upstate, there were people who had to drive 20 or 30 miles a day to go fill up their gas cans. 20 or 30 miles each way to go fill up their gas cans, and that and they were fortunate because there were places that had electricity. Gas tank in the car and put it in the That's right. <laughs> you would have done better. Um, but you can't rent out of the car anymore. <laughs> right. Be anti so if you if you if you operate intelligently, if you reduce the items that you're going to run you reduce the amount of gas that you're going to use. If you do things like decide, you know, manage what you turn on and off, for example, the two biggest things typically in your house are going to be your furnace and your refrigerator. So if you, if you turn your furnace on for a, little, for a while and turn that off and turn the refrigerator on, your power consumption goes down. If you're smart enough to turn off your everything overnight, for example, typically your refrigerator will do okay for six or eight hours, nothing's going to melt. No ones will, will go a lot longer, so long as so you know. new ones will go a lot. And we all know everybody buys a new refrigerator every every year. Thing, well, every ten yeah. years, <laughs> every, every, anyone from the last ten years, if you don't open the door, it should. Last if it's in good day. shape and if the seals are okay, you know, remember that's that's the perfect world. But in if, the wintertime, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> just open your windows. Your house is thirty degrees. In the wintertime, right? open your windows. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have your house heated to seventy-five. You can keep it at about 60. Yes, you have to wear a coat in the house. Big deal. It's an emergency. Um, you're not going to use your, you know, you're not going to use your um, hair, dryer. hair dryers. You're not going to use your, your washing, your dishwashers, and you're not going to wash your clothes and all that kind of stuff. So, you can get it down to about to a to a 4K generator. Now, one of the there are two tricks about the 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 numbers when they sell you a generator. If the generator says 4K 
That's what's called the starting power. That's temporary power. It can get up to 4K for about a minute, maybe two. You take that thing over 4K, you take that thing to 4K for five minutes or so, and you can kiss the generator goodbye. Okay. The, be, there's the second number, which is the running power. The running power is typically going to be uh, is going to be at least a couple of hundred watts below. For example, the typical 4K generator has a running power of 3250. Mm -hmm. So that's a longer term run. The 4000 is only for, for covering the startup. You know, when motors start, they, they take a very high power surge. For consumption surge. surge. They call it the surge, they call it the run, the, the, the startup, things like that. But be careful, because when it says it's an 8000 kilowatt generator, it's really a 7000 kilowatt generator. And then there's another trick on all of these generators. And this is something I didn't know when I did this presentation last year, and that is <coughs> you should not run the generator for long periods of time at more than half the running power. So if you have, a, if you have a, an 8,000 8, watt generator, 7,000 watt running, you don't want to be running it at more than 3,500 watts for more than an hour or so. Because these things are just not made to take the heat. Now, if it's the middle of the winter and you got it outside and there's a 40 mile an hour wind blowing, sure, you can run it at, you know, 7,000 watts for a long time because you got a nice cooling effect. If it's the middle of the summer after a hurricane, there's no wind, it's 90 degrees out, and you got this thing sitting in the sun, you do not want it running up at full power. The, the, when, the, when the vendors give you, when manufacturers give you how much gas the thing takes, they're giving it to you at half load. So that, that 7,000 watt generator, they're telling you if you're running it at 3,500 watts. At full load, those things will be more than double. Okay, so there goes your gasoline. Um, for my house, I'm running a, a furnace and I'm running the, the refrigerator, a couple of lights. I can get away easily with a 4,000 watt generator, 3,250 running, and I'm running it at about 1,500 watts really. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, you see them, they go, they turn on the generator, they get an 8,000 watt generator, they turn it on, and they've got, just got it running 24 hours, and they're screwed because they run out of gas real fast, like my neighbors, like all my neighbors did. Mm -hmm. um, Even the propane guys, we had that yeah. happen in a couple of the storms that went for days. Yeah, you you run have a transfer yeah. switch I'll in get there. to that, I'll get to that, yeah. Get yeah. Okay. I'll get to that. Um, so just, you know, just bear that in mind. This is for an emergency. The less power you use, the, the longer you can last. Okay. Um, I know there's something else. Oh, yeah. The point that Fred brought up, which is a very good point. A lot of these generators come without wheels. And that's great if you have four burly construction workers living in your house at all times. Because <laughs> when you have to move that outside to start it up, you're going to need them. These things weigh over 100 pounds. Get them with the wheels. A lot of them come with the wheels, but, you know, a lot of them you have to pay extra for it. It's worth it. It really is. <laughs> The other point, unless you get a Honda. Yeah. Well, the little Honda, but that's only a 2,000 watt right. generator. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, if, uh, the generators are only used occasionally <laughs> when there's a problem. So, what I do is I go out every month, a month and a half, and start mm -hmm. it up for a run for 10 or 15 minutes. You're stealing all my material. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, thank you. I thought that's you were right. Done. No, no. Uh, no <laughs> Which is the reason right. I ran mine this weekend yes. for 15 minutes with a heater on it. You have to run these things at with least monthly yeah. with a load. Well, you know what? If you're going to go out and use a trimmer, uh, you know, um, hedge, trimmer. hedge trimmer or or leaf blower or something like that, get an electric and run it off your generator. Right. Okay. The gas gas does not store well. No, gas has a has a has a shelf life to it. You can put the stable that chemical you can put in the, into the gas tank, into the actual tank, not into the tank of the of the generator. When you buy the gas, it'll help it last longer. But to play it safe, figure that the gas can't store for more than about a year. Mm -hmm. So you want to use this. It should go for two years with the stable. They say five years, but you know, <coughs> let's play it safe. Remember, we're talking about an emergency. You don't want to be pushing the edge on this. So what do you do? Recy you know, use it, first of all, for your hedge trimmer. Use it for things like that. Put it in the tank. And then put it in your gas tank. I've got six cans or 12 cans, and you know, once a month, whatever's left in the can I'm working on goes in the car, gas tank in my car. It's unleaded gas. There you go. It doesn't matter. Um, 
propane does store better. <coughs> propane will store longer. Now, propane, figure that a, a 4,000 watt propane generator will go through about 1.3 of those 20 pound tanks a day. Okay. Um, but you can get 100, 100 pound tanks. You know, those big tanks you see on the side, and that stuff will store for five or ten years. So, you know, that, that, that's a possibility. Um, whatever you do, don't do like so many of my friends did. Oh, look, it's on sale at Costco. Let's get one. Uh, I've got some friends who needed something to power their sump pump. So they went down to Costco. Costco had an 8,000 uh, watt generator. It was on sale. They went and bought it. And they bought a two and a half gallon tank. So you can't get yeah, it. Yes. They and they asked me. Started it with. Huh? Yeah. They got it started. started it. It was it, you know. And of course, and they they, they, they were affected. They were out of power for about four days, and they needed it for this sump pump. But of course, after the first day, they were just screwed. You know. And well, we don't understand. You know. Well, the sump pump is about 800 watts. <laughs> you certainly didn't need an 8,000 watt generator. Now, transfer switch. Um, a lot of people think, well, I'll just take this thing and I'll plug it into the wall. That's called backfeeding. There are a couple of problems with backfeeding. One is you will set your house on fire. No joke. I mean, if well, you're lucky. Heat, though, right? huh? That gives you heat. That gives you heat. Yes, but in the, in the yeah. And you can dry your clothes. But only for a short period of time. <laughs> okay. Seriously, you have a good chance of setting your house on fire. A lot of times the circuit breakers will not pop um, soon enough. Uh, secondly, you're feeding your power back out to the grid, which means your neighbors will really like you for about 20 minutes until your generator fails. However, the linemen will not come and service you, will not come and fix your neighborhood because they get electrocuted. If somebody's feeding power down that line, they will walk away. Okay, and there have been linemen who've been killed because of, you know, because of people doing that. Uh, so it's not a good idea. What you do instead is you get what's called a transfer switch. Technically, you can do it yourself, get an electrician. Um, basically, a transfer switch sits between the lines coming in and your fuse box or your circuit breaker panel. And you switch items away from the line. <coughs> you switch some of, your, some of your lines away from the incoming power into the generator instead. And that way, those items are being fed from the generator. They can't feed back outside, back out. Uh, it's, it's, you're not going to set your house on fire, and you're not going to kill a lineman. Oh, that's not exciting. I know, we all hate CLMP, but <laughs> it's not the linemen we hate. It's the executives <laughs> we hate. Oh, they're from uh, out of state usually. Anyway, yeah, so that's right. Um, <laughs> carbon monoxide kills. Move the generator outside. Do not run it in your um, in your garage. Do not run it in your basement. And the other thing no. is, if you have an open window, and the wind yes. is blowing towards yeah. that open window, it can awesome. come right into yeah. your house. They had a couple of cases upstate during this last during the Halloween or Easter, where people put the generators in their in their garages. They opened up the garage door and said, "Well, the garage door is open." <laughs> well, first of all, the, because of the the way things work. With the wind coming from most directions, it's actually going to blow the fumes into the garage, not out of the garage. And they had one guy who was doing that. He said, oh, I'll play it safe. I'll put a room fan. He took one of those little, like, you know, eight-inch tabletop fans, and he had that blowing out. Oh, yeah, that and then, of course, when the wind backed and, and, was, and was coming at the garage at 35 miles an hour, he thought that that little eight-inch yeah, fan was going to keep the, the fumes. The family went to sleep. The wind backed. Fortunately, somebody woke up smelled the fumes and they got out of the house, although they, they, they spent a couple of days in the hospital. Remember, especially if you have young kids, the, I don't know which is the bigger danger, carbon monoxide killing you or carbon monoxide doing permanent brain damage, and especially with kids. You know, you, you can be a vegetable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have to have a couple of dogs around this, this uh, or a parrot. Or car car canaries. Car canaries. Car <laughs> canaries were the classic <laughs> in the mines. Just, just leave it outside away from the house. Yeah, leave it outside away from the house. Ground it. the parakeet <laughs> drop over? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. Ground it. These things are not, you know, the construction on them ain't the greatest, so wires will well, fray. Well, most of them have rubber wheels and a rubber stopper on the... On the yeah. So... Yeah, but if you have the rubber wheels and the rubber stopper, that means no when you touch the frame, zap. So ground it. 
Okay, so the... Can you give the boys a quick estimate as to what the electrician charged for the switch <coughs> and how you um, worked that out? It could be expensive. Now, I've heard yeah. a lot of noodle for standard charge, though. This, the, 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 he charged me 200 250 That's what I thought. A lot of people said that. The switch cost. Now, you had a more complicated situation because you had two. Right. Yes. Um, the problem at the, now the transfer switches, depending on what you get, can run anywhere from $100 to a couple of thousand, right. uh, depending on how many circuits and what kind of right. doodads they right. have in it. Right now, the real problem is getting transfer switches. The factories are backlogged like crazy. You can't get a transfer switch. I finally got one off of eBay from a guy in Oregon. Really? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, 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 Home Depot doesn't have them. Uh, Lowe's doesn't have them. You get on Amazon and people are advertising, oh, yeah, we have them. You place the order. Two oh, weeks right. after it was supposed to be shipped, you get a notice, oh, yeah, we're back ordered. You know, you're not getting your oh, transfer really? switch. Yeah. So you gotta be you got to be careful. That'll ease up. Huh? That'll ease up. But yeah. typically they run about $200 for what most people need. Uh, more like 300 these days because they've, they've jacked the prices because everybody wants yeah, them. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, last time I bought one, it was 200 It was, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. So that was the labor, 200 bucks for the labor, plus two fifty for the transfer. Plus, yeah, but, but mine was a very easy thing because <coughs> my panel already had plugs. He didn't have to disconnect anything. You know, just basically, we, mm -hmm. I could have done it myself. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I wanted yeah. to get an electrician to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. What about noise? The bigger the generator, the noisier they are. Uh, now, we all know the little Hondas are nice. They're only 54 dB, which is, you know, typical office kinds of noises. The bigger generators, like an 8,000 watt, will typically be in the 75 to 80 dB range, which is something along the lines of a jet, you know, jet engine that's idling. Okay, um, you know, or Midtown New York traffic noise. For those of you who've been in New York, uh, those of you who lived through Irene and, and heard all the generators in the neighborhood, all you do is open the door and hear 20 of them yes. within three to four blocks. Yeah, when the power came back in my neighborhood, and all of a sudden it was like. Oh. I can hear again. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. Right. A couple of comments well, before I forget them. One is the cheap generators are usually made in China. They will probably work when you first get them. The oh. problem comes if you keep them for a few years and a part goes works. bad, you can't get a replacement. Right. And that's so that when you're looking at generators, get either a standard American brand where you know you can get parts. The Hondas, of course, uh, there's so many, I'm sure you can get parts for Hondas, but the Wang Wu's uh, that they sell at Costco or whatever, uh, you have to assume that when it goes, it's gone. Yeah. You've got to get it yeah. replaced. There's another point. Hondas can be ganged. They have a sp special interface so that you can have two of them running together to get twice the power. There's but also auxiliary tanks that you can get. Now, with the Hondas, so you take two 2,000-watt generators, that's 4,000 watts, maybe 3,000 watts usable. You've just paid $2,000. Or you can just get one of the Chinese and replace it every, five, every three years, and you still cost you less. That's, I mean, just seriously. One, one, thing, you can, one thing to be careful of is the, the so-called good American names. Most of those are made in China, too. Yeah, and but they will have parts. Like maybe, maybe. Yeah. They don't. They're not making gen. Well, no, I'm sorry. They are now. They are now. Yeah. But there's um, what's the big uh, outdoor? It begins with a C. Coleman. 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 Those are all made in in China, and they've gotten uniformly horrible reviews. They use a lot more gas than than a typical same size generator, uh, and they have a very bad breakdown record. One of the things that seems to do fairly well for reference information is look on the reviews on Amazon, look at the reviews of Home Depot, look at the reviews of some of these other things. You're always going to find somebody complaining, you know, this didn't work right. But if you've got 80 reviews and there's one person complaining that that's says, a you know, that's yeah. a good review. If you see 80 reviews and you see a bunch of people complaining and they're all complaining about the same thing, like I was looking at one, it was one of the Chinese ones, and, you know, after about 25 hours of service, the crankshaft broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think I want to buy that one. <laughs> and yeah, John. Well, I've, I have a Winco seven and a half kilowatt that runs on natural gas. I've had it for 25 years. I bought it from Northeast Generator and installed it myself. And um, 
It's run as long as 10, 12 days. Now, what's the name? What Winco, W-I-N-C-O. It's a That's really right. heavy-duty yeah. looking machine. It's got a giant generator motor thing and a one-cylinder engine. It's loud as anything, but it, the only thing that's ever gone wrong with it in 25 years was it wouldn't start right, and the serviceman came over, and there was a spider web in the <laughs> in the gas regulator vent yeah. and he blew it out and that was that was about the extent of the service i've done i mean i've replaced the plug in the oil but mm -hmm. i mean that's, that's it the, other thing. the thing is like oil every seven, yes you follow the instructions about changing the oil and remember because this is something you're not going to use very often which means that the oil will kind of get blah and when you do use it, it's an emergency. So you want that you want to follow the oil change, run the gas out of it over time, fill it with fresh gas, always keep it full, yeah, because otherwise you get condensation. Is, is, I mean, <coughs> those have, things, as you pointed out, you, you're going to go crazy buying gasoline for those, you know, portable generators if you can at all. Install a, a nat something to run off the natural gas. You just if if you can. If you can. If you can. I mean, it's expensive. Those things now, you know, it'll cost you six to ten thousand dollars installed today. Yeah, that's why the subject is these small. I mean, that, yeah. that's why my subject is these small ones because people aren't going to go do that. Stand well, up. the propane. I I uh, just gave away my generator. I had a three and a half kW home light that ran three and a half kW day and night. Uh, World War II vintage, uh, great generator, you couldn't kill it. It was a wrap the cord around and pull it start. Mm. It wasn't the most stable, so I gave it to another ham who needed it for some pumps and stuff. That was it was, was unstable. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it also didn't have, it didn't have wheels on it. And the wheels come off sometimes too. I bought a new one. I bought a 4 kW. I bought it partially because it had a larger tank and it will run longer. Partially because the sine wave was close to a true sine wave. So that if my wife turned the television on, it wouldn't blow. If she turned her computer on, it won't blow. It'll still take care of my two freezers and my two refrigerators and oh, my heating system. So. No. Yeah, seriously. So I, hey, on on te if you're going to be running delicate electronics, if you think you're going to be running no, ham radios no. or, or television, radio. Yes. Get them you want to get things. <laughs> the measurement is called total harmonic distortion. There are two <coughs> inverter generators like the like the um, Hondas. There are others that may not be true inverter, but still have a low total harmonic distortion figure, which is uh, which is what you want for running these things. Generally speaking, a total harmonic distortion under five percent is what you want for running delicate electronics. Beyond that, you're getting you're, you're getting uh, triangle waves. You're getting sawtooths. You're getting who knows what. I think well, that the I, I, think that I, think, I think that the standard advice is don't, don't even don't, use don't, don't run your FX nine thousand D off a generator. This is emergency. Yeah, so you have a, you know, you, the, the, the leverage really is when you're using yeah. whether you have a transformer or switching power supply. Switching power supplies don't give now, a damn what the waveform is because they don't see it. The way to operate your station is to operate on battery power, and then when you're not operating, charge it off the or sine wave keep, generator. Or, or keep a battery charging and have two batteries, right. keep one charging away. Oh, see, we're getting so spoiled. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but the point, yeah, you, you're really delicate, high-end, $10,000 rigs, you don't want to be operating you don't want to put those on one of these yeah. generators. Um, and you made me think of something else when you said that, but I can't remember what now. Um, Fred? I just, before we forget, I didn't break my show and tell stuff. Yeah, we'll get, I'll so don't introduce forget. at the end. Um, one other thing, and, and uh, and that is, when there is a blackout, one of the first things to do is turn off and disconnect everything in the house so that it's not on when the power comes back on. Because if everything in the house is on, when the power comes back on, there's going to be a big surge, and you may blow your line into the house. 
and you're going to be really low on the totem pole for repair to fix your one house when they're still trying to get whole communities operating. Um, second thing is, and, and, and the situation we, was even worse than I thought at first, is a lot of people after Hurricane, uh, after the March 2010 storm, right. the blackouts in Stanford hit right around dinner time. People were cooking. <laughs> they didn't think to turn off their ovens. Then they went, then they went, went to the, and the they, restaurant. They went to the, no, they went to the restaurant. They went to go stay with relatives. They went to go. They went and moved into a hotel. When the power came back on, the stoves came back on. The only thing that didn't come back on was the timer, if they had a timer set to begin with. So, you know, and this is true for gas or electric. The stoves started back up. They're cooking the food and cooking the food and cooking the food, and eventually the food catches fire because, you know. Smoke starts billowing out, the neighbors see the smoke, they call the fire department. Firemen are trained to not be gentle when they enter a house where there's smoke coming out of the house. They want to bust down that door as fast as possible, get in to see if anybody's in danger. The smoke is going to do a tremendous amount of damage. The fire is going to do a tremendous amount of damage. The firemen are going to do a tremendous amount of damage. The firemen are going to do damage. When I showed that line to, to the fire captain, he looked at me and said, well, you're probably understating the situation. <laughs> you know, they're not going to go looking for a key. <laughs> they're just going to bust down that door. They're going to break open windows to get the smoke out, things like that. You may lost the point tonight. I just ask you to either repeat or maybe embellish on one other thing. What did they give you as the requirement for a purpose? And I know it ranges, it's really but they need to hear this. I, I, <laughs> I got to look at the numbers, but it depends on it, it. It mainly depends on the circulator pumps, and it can it can be up in the area of 12, 14, 1800 watts running watts. It depends on the circulator what, what, pumps. What function is that for? For the furnace. For the furnace. For the furnace. Our problem is the circ is air, oil, air, oil, air, oil, air handlers. Yeah, yeah air handlers. Yeah, air handlers. The water pump or the air handler. Circulator pumps. It's not the it's not the it's not the little pump inside the no. furnace that's the problem. It's, it's, air it's the stuff that moves the air or moves the hot water. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Actually, well, the hot water doesn't take much. The air no. is air what's going to take it. The air handlers will take a lot more power than the, that's right. the circulator. Yeah. Depends on the circulator. is about 70 One other thing, when you start Thank looking you, Mr. for a generator, uh, look on the internet to see the specs of the various generators. Then you go to some place like, well, like Home Depot, and they've got... Uh, 4 kW generators in the range of a nine hundred dollars, and they got half a dozen of them there. But if you go online, they've got a 4 kW generator there for four hundred dollars, with better specs than some of the others. So you've yeah. got to look around to see what you really want. But that's that's the other thing I was trying to remember. The, when they when the manufacturer gives you the spec on how much gas it's going to use, they tell you. This will run for 10 hours on a full tank. Well, that sounds pretty good. I only need two full tanks for the whole day, right? How big is the tank? <laughs> okay. Are they talking about a 14-gallon tank or are they talking about a 4-gallon tank? What's the load? Well, they're always talking about half load. So let's say it's a, let's say I saw, I was comparing some generators, they were 6,000 watt generators, which means they were around 51, I 52. I think they were talking about the tank that comes with the Generator. Yeah, they're talking about the that's tank that's in the generator, but I was looking at different brands of, of 6,000 watt generators, about the same output on all of them, and you know, one of them said, goes 12 hours on a full tank of gas. Another one said, goes 12 hours on a full tank of gas. And it took a while to discover that one of them literally was a four gallon tank of gas, mm -hmm. and the other one was a 12 gallon tank of gas. Mm -hmm. That's just an editing typo error. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Both of them were 12 hours, but... Right, right. Well, I think mine said about 13 hours on a tank of gas at half load. Yes, at half load. They're always giving you at half load. At full load, they were looking at roughly four hours. Yes. So, so but... but does say. So it's, it's at... No, but there's a different point, and that is how much gas are you going to need at half load? Just because it says 13 hours, 13 hours at half load, how much gas is that? Is it four gallons or is it 14? Well, well, no, but they don't tell you that. You have to, you have to go playing around in the specs and you'll find buried someplace deep that, oh, this is a 14 gallon tank. Yeah, so, uh, too bad.
I just want to get some. I been looking into uh, natural gas generators, and I was thinking getting ones around six to eight kW. Um, Hurricane party in Ernest House. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll be here. The, the motors, uh, the, uh, the not the, the, the generators are all right, but the ga a small gas, a natural gas motor is not as reliable as the large ones. Uh, is the first bit of information. So six kW, eight kW, uh, is got more problems with it in terms of mechanically. Second of all, uh, if you buy a small one, then you have to buy this transfer switch separately. Um, so I'm now looking at a 15 kW, the 20 kW generator, but it comes with the transfer switch, which is um, it's a complicated one in the sense that it automatically every month runs the generator for a certain period of time, disconnect, you know, disconnects from the line, runs the generator, and then comes back. So it always keeps itself going in terms of knowing what it has to do. The difference between a 15 kW and a, and, and a 20 kW is only a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, so when you get up into that range, the, the, the price uh, cost narrows. But you're up in the thousands of dollars yeah. at that point. Uh, the other thing that really vexed me, I, I had a nice place all set up where I was going to put this, because it looks like a, uh, a small air conditioning unit. It, it's outside and it stays there all the time and it's permanently hooked in. But it has to be five feet away from the house, yeah. which is, I think, a good thing. Except that for me, that means I got to figure out, I got to dig a trench, shelter. and I got to run all the, the, the utilities yeah. out to it and everything. For it, so yeah. Yeah. damaged by the weather. Yeah. Now some of the, some of those are, are okay. Yeah. No, they 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 they're, yeah, they're made to be outside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so they work that way. Not mine. Have you considered <laughs> the whether you have <laughs> adequate yeah. gas Actually. pressure? to run these things. Thank you. I, 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 th I think I probably do because I have a lot of other gas appliances in the house and there's been, not have been a problem when I've, I've installed those. Let's and, just check because these yeah. things... And they wouldn't be running at the time well, ago, yeah, except yeah, for the gas no, furnace. Gas, you'll run it. You'll run your <coughs> stove, you'll run your oven, you'll run your heat yeah. using the same gas. Right. You got yeah. Your yeah. Your right. yeah, well, I'm not going to use those other things when the generator is on. You know, yeah. You're not going to uh, when it's cold out? Well, the, the, furnace, the furnace will run. It's, it's well, yeah. no, I mean, you got, got, a, got a one inch pipe coming, you know, running. Water out. Well, yeah, well, I, I have my, you know, that's, that's yeah, I have at least, I have at least, I think mine is an inch, an inch and a quarter coming in. Yeah, Ernest, yeah. seriously, he, he leaves the, the point because <laughs> right. I've, I've yeah, been told that that the issue. A lot of, company, yeah. 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 A lot of people buy these things and they don't have a pipe. My next door neighbor has just got a natural gas whole house generator. Yankee Gas put in a new line for free. Oh, okay. <laughs> so happy to get the customer, right? Yeah. So, so you have gas on your street, though. Yeah, we have, we're like the northernmost street in Sanford with gas. Yeah, so, so they don't have them lighted or right, right up next to the city gate with no gas. So, so, so you know what's really exciting about all this is how, how excited people can get about a subject that has nothing to do with that, but you're going to get it. It does, because you want to operate the radio when nobody else can talk. This has nothing to do with the radio. This has nothing to do with the radio. Just get a 